All right, so now we've identified the problem. And I'm gonna continue on with this example from, from the last video where we have a problem with our backend server. And what we've diagnosed by looking at the test suites is that I've made a get request for the slash restaurants route. And instead of it returning a 200 and some information about the restaurants, it returned a 404 status code, meaning that the eight backend server did not know, didn't, doesn't know anything about this route. So something about my backend server is wrong. Now, usually this type of error will, will lead me in the right direction, right? It'd be like, okay, you know, what part of, so the next question is like, what part of my code do I need to look at? And, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and look at the, the, the backend server. Um, and, you know, some of you have probably seen what the problem is already. My, the location of my mouse maybe gave it away. Um, but this is not normally gonna be the case, right? Now, at this point, there's a temptation sometimes to just like stare at the code for a long time and, and ponder the, the code, right? And, you know, I'm not going to say don't try that at least for like a minute or two um, in the sense of sometimes reading through the code. And, and if I have some sense of like, you know, where the routes are defined, I might look at that part of it and see if I can see an obvious problem. And sometimes you can and sometimes you're done, you know, and, and it's, you know, uh, you're, you're finished. Um, great. That doesn't happen all the time, right? And so if it doesn't happen, then I suggest you move on to a more active process where you're actually making changes and seeing what happened and, and you're investigating, right? You're actively uh, trying to figure out what, what's happening. Usually bugs are caused by a mismatch between what I think should happen and what's actually happening. I have made assumptions about things and what I want to do now is I want to start testing those assumptions. Um, and so here's one way to do this that I fully endorse, which is a style of debugging called printf debugging. Now, there are people who will, you know, claim that this is bad or this is not how real programmers do it. And I have worked with, I am a real programmer. I've worked with many real programmers. They all do this, okay? And, and you know, maybe we should be louder and prouder about it, but we all do this. And it's a very, very common technique, which is that, how does this work? It's very simple. We put messages in the code and then we run the test again and use them to examine various hypotheses. Okay, so I'm gonna look, let, let's look at this get restaurants route. This is supposed to be called when a get request for the slash restaurants route is made. And so the first hypothesis that I wanna test is is this code being called? Um, and, and usually when you start doing this, my suggestion is um, to put, let's see here. So I'm gonna go into this dispatch tree. Um, and what I'll do is let's put some, let, let's put a print statement uh, right here. So I'm gonna do system.out um, dispatch. I'm gonna say entering dispatch method. And, and is this, is this a, a particularly useful print statement? Not necessarily. The reason I typically do this first is I want to make sure that I can see these print statements, right? Um, so I'm going to run the test again. Um, and we're going to wait while Android Studio does the thing. And, and what I'm expected to see, I am expecting that this dispatch method is called because it's supposed to handle all of the HTTP requests. And so, okay. And, and this is really just a confirmation that I can see the output from these print statements, um, and and I can't. And the I'm trying to I'm trying to think. So let's let's try to figure out why this was why I see this twice, right? Um, and I think it's because yeah, okay. So there's another method. There's another call to this uh, made when I start up the the client, um, and so that's why that's happened, right? So okay. Um, so I see this printed. So now I know that my print statements are visible. Um, because if you put a print statement somewhere and it doesn't fire, sometimes you're wondering maybe it's just something wrong with my setup or something. So I, now I know my setup's working. Um, okay, so I'm gonna test the hypothesis that this method is being called. Because if I look at this method, it looks okay, right? It's setting the HTTP okay, that's 200. So it's setting the status code properly. Seems, I mean, maybe I'm using the wrong method, right? So maybe, maybe I'm just doing this wrong, right? Um, but let's see if we're actually getting to this part of the code. Um, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 
uh, system dot out dot println get restaurants called and you don't have to write something this descriptive I would particularly if you're going to use more than one because once you start writing here or foo or something you quickly run out of small things to, to add um, so I'm going to put that in there and then I'm, I'm going to run the test again and this is now my workflow my workflow is add some instrumentation run the test look at what happened add some instrumentation run the test look at what happened and so now what I'm, the hypothesis I'm examining is, is this method being called? And sure enough, I don't see that printed. I see enter dispatch method, but I don't see get restaurants called. And so now I know something that I didn't know a minute before, which is that the reason, you know, it, so before it's possible that there was some problem with this code, but there still may be a problem with this code, but right now it's never even being called. So I'm pretty sure that the problem is somewhere else. So now let's let's look at our dispatch method, right? And so now why don't I put, you know, and and you know, now sometimes you start to wonder like, am I crazy, right? So so this actually directly calls get restaurants, but let's put another uh, message in here. We'll do system dot out dot printlin um, calling get restaurants. I don't know why that's grayed out. There we go. Okay. So let's run it again. Now, do I really need this? No, because, but you know, I don't know, maybe something else is happening. It's just sometimes it's good to like work pretty methodically, right? Um, but I don't expect to see this printed because if I got here, then I would have really expected get restaurants to be called. Uh, and I did, okay. So now I'm not getting into this if statement. Uh, so now the question is like, what else is happening? And, and you can use print statements to do this sort of iterative tracing. So let's see if I got to the top of the dispatch tree. This is my little if series of if statements that I'm using to make decisions about which methods to call. Um, so I'm gonna put uh, reached uh, dispatch tree, and then I'll run it again. Why am I doing this? Because I wanna know like, did something go wrong before I got here? Or does it go wrong later? Right? Am I somehow not getting into there some, somehow? And now you'll see that every time I see entering dispatch method called, I see reach dispatch tree. So, and, and I can, I, I could also like print the path here. Um, let's see here, the, the path is called path, right? That's just, uh, oh, I have to do string concatenation, there we go. All right, so let's, let's do this. This will allow me to see that first call that's being made by the startup code as well. That'll be helpful. Uh, so I can distinguish between the two of them. Okay, running, running, running. Uh, okay, and you'll see the first time I come through, the path is empty and then it's restaurants. Um, okay, so so now, you know, and, and again, I mean, I'm, I'm hamming it up a little bit here because many of you have probably already spotted what the problem is. Um, so, so now let's put something down here and maybe we'll say, you know, it's always good to have a sense of humor when, uh, when printf debugging uh oh. Uh, because because the only time we get down here is if we were asked for a route that we don't have. The dispatch tree should have if else branches for all the routes that the server knows about. So if we end up down here, what's happened is we haven't found that right. And you'll see, okay, reach dispatch tree restaurants. Uh oh. And that's because we got to line ninety six. And what's about to happen? is I'm about to return a response that indicates not found. And that's what the test suite, why the test suite is failing. So if I go to test suite 106, what I'm supposed to get back is something that has status code 200, but what the server is now preparing for the restaurant's route is a response that has status code, uh, sorry, status code 404, right, not found. And, you know, now that I've started to nail this down a little bit, right, I mean, at this point, I have a pretty good idea of, of where the problem is. Like, I'm getting to the dispatch tree, and, of course, you know, as the big final reveal, you'll see that uh, I'm just checking for the wrong path, right? It's supposed to be restaurants, and I'm checking for restaurant. Um, now, you know, no matter how triumphant you feel in this moment, here's my suggestion. Don't take out your login yet, right? You might still need it. So make the fix. Let's try it, see what happens, crossing our fingers, please 
don't print, uh-oh, you know, I mean, I've said this many times as I've been working on various pieces of code. Boom, okay, good. Now, you know, the next step would probably be to remove our, remove our logging messages, right? We don't want these cluttering up our outputs. We have a couple in here and we can go through and just, you know, take them out one at a time. There's our dispatch method, put that in here, uh, put it in there. There you go. And, oh, that's two. Uh, run the code again, make sure it's still working. And then we're good. So print style debugging, it is a thing and it's useful. Uh, and you can use it to examine variables, you can use it to test certain conditions and things like this. And it is it's a tremendously useful debugging technique. So, you know, when we start to help you, what we're gonna be asking is to see some evidence that you've tried this, right? And, and it, it st things still may not make sense, but we wanna see some evidence that you put in some print statements to get a sense of some idea of what the code flow path is and maybe what are some of the values of variables that, that you see along the way. As a final quick note here, I, I wanna point out something else uh, and I'll, I'll probably put this in a later uh, installment uh, of, of this as well. Um, the, you are transitioning from working in our homework environment to working in Android Studio. And Android Studio is a highly sophisticated piece of software and it knows it can help you. It knows frequently when you've made a mistake. So here's a great example. You'll see that there's a warning being generated by Android Studio. And that warning is flagged right here and it says string values are compared using uh, double equals not dot equals. And this is a problem, right? Essentially, so let's try running this again. This, this may work, I'm not exactly sure if it won't, but let's try it and just see. Um, we may be able to get away with this in this particular case. Um, you know, let's 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 try it. Uh, and and no, actually, it's it's hitting a 404. So you know, use the IDE, use it to your advantage, right? It's telling you something's wrong, and it actually has a suggestion about what to do, which will fix the problem. So we'll talk more about that in another episode. But I wanted to just hint that here because you know you see the screen check mark right here. That's good. Right? That means that IntelliJ, or Android Studio, sorry, it's based at IntelliJ, didn't notice any problems with the code that you're working on, right? which is a good place to be. Okay, so clean up your code, step zero, identify what's going wrong, step one. Step two, add logging, add tracing, add messages to your code to help you understand what's happening and examine the, your, your assumptions, right? Make sure that if you think of methods being called, it's actually being called. If you think one thing is happening before another, that's actually taking place in the order that you thought, right? Those are super useful strategies for helping you find problems.